you know, sorry about that. No, it's okay. So we're back. So maybe you can, you were talking about Boku's fight. Yes, from yesterday in Rising. So the guy he was fighting was a pretty badass guy. The guy, uh, Sh uh, Shinokawa Rikudo, he's a very good guy. He has a great boxing. So he's starting deep and then he was winning some, he, was, he didn't have much fights, but the guys that he was fighting were tough guys. So that's how he made his name and got his chance in rising, facing Boku. So to uh, resume the fight, uh, I think we saw Boku with more striking than he used to do before. But it unfortunately didn't go his way. So I hope he, he bounced back and come again. You know, you're talking about Ryzen, you know, and obviously you were there when Pride ended. You yes. know, I always like to ask people about this stuff, especially people who lived in Japan. You know, Jeff, like I talked to Gono recently. Yes. I think I did a show with him maybe right before yours. And, you know, Japanese people, they're kind of, they don't want to talk about it too much. Yes. You know, what do you think about what happened? And, you know, maybe, you know, when it happened, you know, what did you think about Pride going away? Um, uh, I was like shocked at the first. I was there when all that happened. So when all that happened, uh, they announced that uh, um, on the internet that they had something, an announcement to make with the guys from the UFC. So uh, they announced that they, uh, they made a, a big announcement in the Saitama Super Arena. And there they announced that they've been bought by the UFC. But that the UFC actually was going to pay to invest in the Pride franchise and keep the price, the Pride franchise going. But then we waited, we waited, we waited. And after that, we saw uh, fighters uh, from Japan, uh, like Shogun, Nogera, all being fighting in the UFC. So people were like, oh, maybe that was a lie, maybe. Uh, they didn't, uh, from the beginning, they just wanted the fighter from Pride. Like people were asking questions, of course, but nobody had, uh, had the, the point of, uh, a point of truth. So, and after that, uh, when I wonder, I think when the Mayweather fight was announced with Tenshin, uh, some Japanese media asked uh, the promoter what was going on. Uh, during those time, and uh, some Japanese media point out that uh, when uh, Pride was bought by the UFC, the promoter didn't have the right to put another show for the for the next seven years. So that's why uh, uh, officially uh, the the Pride couldn't continue during those seven years. They couldn't put another show after seven years after uh, the the Pride was bought. Do you think like Ryzen or anything can come back to that level again? The Rising is pretty good right now, but uh, you know, with the, all the coronavirus stuff that's going on, they can't bring fighters from the, the overseas. But I think Rising is very, very good promotion, high level, because it's the same team as Pride. It's the same people. So the same production, same everything. But you know, most of the Pride fighters uh, had their career. They're still competitive, but you know, uh, it is nice to bring some new faces sometime. And I see, uh, I really like the concept, like you have rising stars making their name with good, with the good results. And you have a uh, famous fighter who had their career, but still a threat uh, fighting each other. I think that's a really good, uh, good concept in rising. So I think that helped. And we also saw like uh, stars now, they come into the UFC, like Manel Cape, uh, Yuri Poraska, some nice, uh, nice fighters uh, making their name in rising and going to the UFC. I think that's some good stuff too. And also the rising now connect with Bellator. Uh, so you have you have like Dion Caldwell, which is a good wrestler. Uh, we have 
uh, what was his name? The guy in Bantam when we catch the belt, uh, the uh, Spartan. Spartan. Uh, I, I, or something like that. I don't remember that. Which one? Which one are you talking about? Uh, uh, the 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 guy he, he wear he wear a hat of Spartan, uh, Spartan helmet. Hmm. He just fought for the belt. He catch the belt. In uh, in the bantam weight class, I don't remember his name, but he's very good. And also, they try to Bellator said that they're going to be ready to make their bantam weight champion against uh, Kyoji Horiguchi. So I think that for me, that's the fight I want to see. I want to see that fight wherever it's happened. If it's happening in the Bellator cage, so be it. If it's happening happening in the Ryzen ring, even better. So. I think uh, the, the, the strength of Rising right now is that they connect with different promotions. They have connection with Pancreas, they have connection with um, Deep, with uh, XFC, uh, with the Cage Warriors, Bama. I think that's the strength right now that can make actually maybe even better than Pride. It's only the future will tell. Yeah, Gono was saying he thinks the biggest problem is that it's not on TV, like regular TV. Like, and he said in Japan, without that, it's like TV is more important than the internet, you know? Yes, yes, yes. It, it is true. It is true. Um, because uh, I will try to answer the, the question. Okay. So when you fight in, uh, in Rising, uh, you, you, you fight for the promotion, but also the, the TV... Uh, is there, you know, the TV kind of invest of the show to make the TV ratings. Basically, when Rising start again, it's because the fight with um, Masato and Kid is the biggest TV uh, ratings in Japan. And the Fuji TV, which is the channel who promote fights, ratings were going down. So they tried to put back the same ratings. And at the same time, Rising was uh, coming back from the Pride Ashes. So they make the, the Rising Promotion and Fuji TV together to make those ratings back. So when they choose a fighter to fight in Rising, they have to choose a fighter that can make those ratings come back. So I think that's why it's more important than the internet because in that case, you have the TV that is involved. Like, for example, you take the UFC, the UFC, they just put fights. They don't care if you have a, 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 a TV channel that will uh, put the fight on, like Spike TV before. So I think that's why in Japan, the TV is really important. And uh, yes, Rising is on TV, but you know, it's like a digest. They select the fight that's gonna be on TV. You don't have the world events, like the entrance, and all stuff like that. Like for example, the event starts at two o'clock in Japan and finish around eight. And on TV is gonna start at uh, 10 and finish at, uh, at uh, around midnight. So you have only two hours of the six hours event. So I think uh, that's also uh, a, a bad thing. It will be better if they put the world event. I think more ratings will be up for the show. I think what they really need is to have a handful of Japanese fighters that can beat foreign fighters, like consistently. Yes, I, I think that's what they're trying to do. Like say, they do a lot of foreign fighters uh, with, um, with Japanese. I think that's uh, what they're trying to do uh, in the rising. Of course, it would be nice for them to have a, a Japanese champion. So I think right now the guy who make that work perfectly is Kyoji Horiguchi because of his fight with Manel Cape. He fought on the, in the UFC, he was uh, the, the, the only Japanese guy who fight with, um, with Demetrius Johnson. And uh, the fight was uh, a big fight, a very good fight. Every, anybody could have a chance. He lost like a, what, like I think five seconds of the end of the fight. So I think Kyoji right now is the, the international Japanese guy. He trained in American top team. 
He trained with King Mo, with Masvidal, Phil Daru for the for the conditioning. I think he's the guy who can make the the Japanese to the international. Yeah, I think when I first came there, you know, the Japanese were already, maybe even a few years before that, you know, they were already really well-rounded compared to most fighters. Because yes. like Gono told me, he was already training in a Kira Maeda's gym, Ring's yes. gym. 1993, yes. he said he was training everything together already. Yes. You know, standing, <laughs> ground, everything. So I think Japanese fighters already knew how to do everything. And the foreign fighters really didn't, you know. Yes, it's a very, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting point that you just bring up. Because before, uh, like we have Sakuraba, we have uh, uh, Akihiko Ono, we have um, the guy who fought in Sengoku, uh, Misaki, I think, Kazuhiro Misaki. Those guys were trying to find like what they didn't have in the gym. Like they train everything, studies, they were more like scholar guys. Right now, uh, after the pride thing, they were more like close. Like we have our way, we do our way. Like they, they had their way in training. So when I train and I say, okay, guys, when I went to American top team, they do this thing that way. And they were like, oh, but here we do it that way. Like, you know, they don't try to to expand their knowledge. Like now they do because they understand the, impo the importance of, of that. They, they understand like, okay, we're gonna fight with foreigners. We have to understand how it is in the foreign countries, how they train, what can we learn? What can also, what can they learn from us? And uh, that's something they, they try to understand now, but at a certain period of time, they were really close in that, inside their training ways. Like, for example, the, the strength and conditioning in Japan is very new right now. It's something very new that came like maybe I would say two, two or three years ago. But in the US, like it's been around since the 2005, 2007. But here it's come like 2016 or 17 like that. So that's, I think, the, the point right now, like be, before the old school Japanese guy, like Kosaka, Kosaka, Gono, Misaki, uh, Sakuraba, all those guys, and the, the generations that came after that. That's the, the big difference, I think. Now, you know, let's kind of talk about your fighting because, you know, you fought in deep. Yes. And uh, kind of what is your plan going forward now? So uh, to start from the beginning, I start my first fight with the promotion pancreas, amateur pancreas, I fought in amateur pancreas. I have two wins and two losses. And then after that, I went to amateur rising because in the 2016 and 17, they have a big festival where you have one day of entire fights. Like you have MMA, amateur MMA tournaments, you have amateur wrestling, you have uh, jiu-jitsu, IBJJF tournament, you have no-gi tournament, and it's all going on the world there. So I made my amateur roots there in uh, amateur rising and amateur pancreas, and then I just uh, signed in deep, like in two months ago, and I made my first fight in deep uh, November 1st, in deep 99. So it didn't go my way, like, I had the technique on the ground, but my opponent was more like a wrestler. So he had the wrestler strength. So he had that advantage over me. So uh, what happened is he took me down and he gave me elbows. Unfortunately, I took elbows behind the head. I said to the referee, I was okay, but I was not, you know, because I tried to, I wanted that position on the ground where I, maybe I get a Kimura, I get the sweep or something but I didn't recover, so he kept pounding me with the elbows and I lost the fight in four minutes, 50 seconds on the first one. So what I want to do after that is uh, fight in March or April, again with Deep, and uh, we see how it's gonna be. So is this something you wanna to continue to do a lot or you know, yeah, as a career? Yeah. Uh, for the first fight, I was like super nervous because you know, the Japanese uh, strictness, 
you know, like you have, you can't make mistake. Everything has to be perfect. I think that was hard on me. But after I get in the cage and I had the sensation of what, how, it's, how it's going, how the promotion is running, I gained a lot of experience from that and I want to, from that, bounce back again. So maybe talk about some of your other experiences in Japan, like outside of fighting. For someone who's thought about coming there, maybe living there, what would you say to somebody like that? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get that question a lot uh, in my personal life. So there's many people that, for example, from France, they want to come in Japan and uh, start training. So my advice to them is if they come to Japan and think that in Japan, fighters make a lot of money, like before in pride, and they fight for the money, that's not the right mind to have. Because we have like champions uh, of Shuto that like they, they, they big stars in Japan, they, they have the belt, but they work night jobs, like they make ramen stuff, they work security, they have to have a second job to, to survive. So if you come in Japan with the mindset of be a superstar full of money and all that, that's not the right mind to have. And also uh, when you come to train here, like it's more like uh, you're in the house, you're not in a gym, you're in the house. So for example, if your coach say, okay, let's go eat, you have to come. If uh, he asks you to come and open the gym, you come and open the gym. If you, uh, he asks you to clean, you have you to ask, he, uh, you have to clean. But with the foreign, I think with the foreign mentality, we see that as a core, as you say in English, is, is that correct? You, you see that as core, but it's not. Actually, it's a mark of respect. So, like, they know you here and they're just testing your motivation. Are you really want to be here? For Japanese gym, this is the most important is if you want to be here or not. So they're testing you that way, like with all those stuff. And the more you respond well to that, you accept that that is not my gym. Like, for example, you go uh, Planet Fitness, I go, I can leave everything and somebody will clean after me. If you take that, uh, that away and accept that you, this is your house, I think you can only go up from that. And that's the best advice I can give uh, to foreign fighters that want to come in Japan. Uh, like, uh, not professional fighters, but professional wannabe fighters and train in Japan. That's the advice uh, I have to give to them. So as we're kind of winding down this interview, I always like to let people kind of, if you have people that are listening to this, what is something you want to leave them with? Um, uh, like a message for the, the, the viewer? Uh, I want to say, first of all, thank you for watching this uh, interview and supporting the, the podcast. Uh, I want to thank also thank you for inviting me to, to that podcast. And um uh, whatever you do now in those times, uh, stay strong. Keep training for those who train. And uh, I hope to see you soon in Japan. And if you wa whenever you come, you can follow me on Instagram at Buscape MMA, B U S C A P M M A. And um, anytime you have questions, just hit me back on Instagram and uh, I will uh, be glad to answer as much as I can. Okay, well, Zach, you know, it was great talking to you. And, uh, you know, I hope we can catch up again sometime and I could have That's you good. on another show. Yes, and if you stop by in Japan, let's have a beer. Oh, for sure, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. All right, take care. Take care. Thanks. Yeah.